So this is N166, an adult female that we captured this past summer. She has four cubs. The cubs are being processed. We're finished with mom. Uh, mom, we were checked the collar, we replaced the space around the collar, made sure that she had all of her marks, which include two ear tags, spit tag, and a lip tattoo. And then we make sure that her airway is clean and clear. And we monitor her heart rate and her temperature about every five to 10 minutes, as well as her respiration. The reason she has a, um, a towel over her eyes is because under the drug combination we use, they can't respond with their eyes, so we protect their eyes from sunlight or any sort of falling debris. And if you lean up, you can see Now we're weighing the bear cub. What important measurement to check on the health of the cubs. And this cub weighs 2.35. 2.35 kilograms. And it is a male cub. So now we're gonna put what we call a pit tag into the cub. It's similar to the chips they put in dogs and cats. It's a way for us to mark the cub um, and that way, if we ever handle a bear again, we check for a pit tag. And if it has a pit tag, we can identify who that bear originally was. Because as you can see, these cubs are too small for ear tags. They're too small to put a tattoo in. So the pit tag's the best way to mark them. All right, so what we do is, just like a dog or cat, we put it at the base of the neck. We pull up the fur to create a tent. And that's where we put the pit tag in underneath that tent. What we're going to do next is take a genetic sample and we do that by taking a clip of the edge of the ear and that genetic sample when we analyze it in a lab will help us determine how related this bear is to other bears we've captured on the urban suburban study um, who knows we might find out that we've handled the father um, for this bear cub on our study. And by learning the genetics relatedness of all these bears on the Urban Suburban Bear Study, it gives us an idea of the genetic diversity of these bears, as well as how much we're seeing bears come in to Asheville, or maybe even disperse out of Asheville, because we also have genetic samples from bears we've sampled in the surrounding, more rural areas. We don't need much, just a small tissue sample. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how small it is. But again, we don't need much to be able to get the genetic results that we're looking for. And you'll notice we, we're not naming these cubs. We don't give them names except for their ID number. So this cub's ID number is C070. Basically C70, which means it's the 70th cub we've handled on this project. So one thing we do when we handle cubs is, in addition to marking them, taking a genetic sample, is we take what we call morphological measurements, which is pretty much a fancy word for measuring various parts of the cub's body. And that also helps us give an idea of their growth rates, and as well as taking some of these measurements, we can actually determine when these cubs were born. <clears throat> so this first measurement we're taking is called the zygomatic arch. It's basically the widest part of the head that we're taking a measurement on. As you can see, our cub's nice and calm. And one thing we're doing with those last two measurements, the ear length and the hair length, is we've discovered that those two measurements are fairly independent 
of the health of the cub or the health of the mother, and it actually provides us a really good idea of when these cubs were born. Basically, we plug those two measurements in a formula we've created, and it'll give us uh, the estimated birth date for these cubs. What we're looking for with tooth eruption is to see if the canine has broken through the gum line. And unlike the cubs we did yesterday, uh, these teeth, they have not yet erupted, but they're close. I'd say they're probably like a day or two away. Probably about seven to eight weeks old is the estimate since the teeth haven't erupted. Usually about eight to nine is when the teeth erupt. Yeah. All right, so we are done with him. scent on the cub, what we do is just rub it in debris. Just make him smell more like he did, hopefully. Make mom less wary if he has human scent, though we have found that these bears are fairly tolerant of human disturbance and human scent. It's just an extra precaution we take. It's somewhat exposed when you think of it. She faces the morning sun, so that provides some warmth. All this privet and briar provides some protection from snow and rain. Um, the rock ledge provides some protection, but we do see where, while a tree den is preferred, because it provides a lot of insulation, a lot of security, minimizes disturbance maybe from other bears or even people, we often find bears also in fairly open dens, such as this one. And as long as those cubs stay by the female, she's really good at protecting them herself, keeping them warm and dry with using her own body. Thank you.